Hey, hi, howdy, and hello everyone. It's Wiggity here with my next tips and tricks video for Stardew Valley. Now my last one helped out a lot of people, which of course made me super happy. And as I've been playing a few new farms since the 1.5 update, I've compiled a bunch of new tips or things that you just may not know about to help you out too. And if you like videos like this, be sure to subscribe to get notified of more whimsical, cozy, and helpful content from me. Okay, let's just dig right on into the good stuff. Starting this list off right, we have the best year one spring crops for experience. In the springtime, getting your farming skill up quickly is a great idea so that you can start crafting sprinklers and processors to help you make more money. In the first spring, there are two crops that I find are the best options for getting your farming skill up. The two best crops for leveling your farming that you can buy on day one are kale and potatoes. They both take six days to grow. Kale gives you 17 experience points and potatoes give you 14, which breaks down to 2.8 experience points a day for kale and 2.3 experience points per day for potatoes. If you are purely after the experience points, kale is the average daily winner, but as for gains, being that when you harvest potatoes, there is a chance of that extra crop popping up as well for a little bit of extra money, potatoes definitely win it for me, especially if harvested on a lucky day. So many potatoes. Now let's clear one thing up. Contrary to what I used to and most people still do believe, you won't get extra experience points for the extra potatoes. Choose where you sleep. One of my favorite little things added to the 1.5 update is being able to move your bed. And for those of you like me who stumble into bed at 1.50 AM, taking the time to move your bed to an easy access spot is almost mandatory. It will help you loads. Convenient selling. Speaking of moving things around a little bit, this update added the ability to move the shipping bin and it's free to move too. Early on, there are a lot more convenient spots to put this. I like mine right in front of the house for easy access on my way to bed or right by my processing center and farm entrance. Wherever you are near the most works great so that you can do something a bit more creative with this spot right here. Also, if you have the extra wood, build a few around so that you don't have to backtrack. Get your hands on some cheap storage. This is a feature I don't use much and sadly isn't available on mobile, but if you want an easy building for extra storage, build yourself a cabin. You can build cabins on your farm and don't even have to have anyone move in. It's super cheap and you can turn it into a great processing room or aquarium or whatever you want. Just can't remove those seeds though, unless you get someone else to join your farm. With local co-op, it might even be easier to do that too. Next up, use screenshots to your advantage. Now this feature was added in the 1.4 update and I have been using it so much on my beach farm. This can be an often overlooked option, but you can use it in some pretty helpful ways. It'll give you a bird's eye view of the entire screen that you're at, which can help you spot crates, dig spots, forageables, mushroom trees in the fall, and locate your wandering animals too. I find it extremely helpful in your first spring in Cinder Snap Forest to help spot spring onions and other forageables without having to waste your precious time for a big old patch of nothing. And zoom! <laughs> Another tip as far as the camera goes, zooming out can be super helpful finding things without a screenshot, but I find it especially useful in the mines. It can aid you in finding that ladder faster or spot a diamond node that you didn't even know was there. In Skull Cavern, I find it very useful to help me survey the potential threat on that level as well. Make some convenient chests. In my last tips video, I went over having a chest and processors in areas that you spend a lot of time in. Let's add to that just a little bit more. If you check the community board and calendar often, consider keeping a chest in Pelican Town. Requests for Joja Cola, quartz, refined quartz, and other things get asked for often, so keep some here for quick access or keep most loved items for some villagers near where you know they're going to frequent. That way, when you see someone wandering around, you can just grab and go. I also like to keep a chest with resources over at Robin's too. To make sure that you don't place a chest where it's gonna get trampled and off of the villagers' paths, check out the link below to the wiki page for chests that show some pretty safe spaces. 
stock up on your tradables. Another chest location that I find very important to have is actually in Calico Desert. I put mine right near the Desert Trader. The Desert Trader has items that change based on the day, so keeping your Jade, Extra Omni Geodes, Emeralds, whatever it is you might need accessible here will help you from forgetting it at home. <laughs> Again. Quickly stop the cast. When you are fishing, sometimes you can be after a certain fish that only shows up during a specific time frame, or you're fishing in the rain in spring and know that there is no way that you'll catch that catfish with level 2. You can actually cancel out the fishing minigame so that you aren't wasting your time on other fish. I found it pretty useful while I was trying to catch the legend on the last day of spring a few times, or when I accidentally snag an octopus and I was just looking for a puffer fish. Get your iridium from the comfort of your home. Fish ponds are a fun thing to have on your farm and can be pretty useful depending on the fish you keep. With the remix bundles, having the engineer bundle needing an iridium ore, keeping super cucumber in the fish pond is one of the few ways to get a hold of this ore before Skull Cavern. If you are needing that item, I suggest getting a pond for these fish. Oh yes, get your hoard on! <laughs> now hear me out, it's very tempting to always sell things as you get them, but if you hoard things until you level up on farming and fishing, I promise it'll be worth it. With fishing, after you reach level 5, you can choose the fisher profession and then sell everything after that, which will give you a 25% sell boost on your hard work. With farming, level 5 gives you the option to choose tiller, which makes your crop sell for quite a bit more as well. So if you have to wait a day or two to sell your massive stash of blueberries, consider waiting for this level up. An alternative source of quartz. Fire quartz is a mineral that is potentially needed to complete the boiler room and on a non-remix community center is often one of the last things needed for that room. If you are having a hard time making progress in the mines, fishing might just be the way to go for you. While fishing, the fire quartz can be one of the items that you snag inside of a treasure chest. You only need to be at least level 2 and be hitting the further fishing zones 5 tiles out from the shore. After that, you have a 4% chance of that item inside the treasure chest being a fire quartz. Take full advantage of that free real estate. After summer rolls around, on the third day, the bathhouse and the train yard gets unlocked. The bathhouse is a great place to up your energy after spending it all on watering your crops if you haven't gotten sprinklers by this time, but I use this area for other things. Turning this place into a tree farm is a great use of the space for early on before you unlock other areas. It's out of the way and a great way to stock up on wood during Robin's resource rush or in the winter while trees aren't really growing on your farm without fertilizer anymore. Other great free real estate places are in the quarry after that's unlocked, and of course the desert. There are a lot of great ways that you can use empty spaces. Help along that rare fall time event. Speaking of trees, once it's fall time or right before, consider just letting your trees on your farm going wild and not cutting any down that isn't necessary. Why? Well, for mushroom trees, of course. There is a subtle rare event that can happen in the fall time. Any full-grown untapped tree or stump even has a chance of turning into a mushroom tree. So I like to up the odds a little bit by having as many tree options as I can for the game to choose from. If it happens on a stump for you, no worries at all, these mushroom trees will spread their spawn much like regular trees do, so eventually you get a full grown one if you let it spread, or the stump will grow back in the springtime. You can use tree fertilizer on these too and put a tapper on to get a good source of mushrooms. If you have a few extra, chopping these down yield mushrooms and even a small chance at the rare mushroom cap. Ah, sweet, sweet mahogany. Getting a good resource of hardwood early on is not easy, and in order to get to the secret woods, legitimately that is, for your stumps, it usually takes getting a steel axe, which is not cheap. But just get your axe to copper and take out the stumps on your farm. There's a chance that one of those stumps will give you a mahogany tree seed. Once you get that planted and growing, let the tree keep spreading its seed by not chopping it down or at least just leaving the stump. It makes getting a good supply of hardwood much easier. 
A good way to be sure to get the seed is to clear the stumps first thing in the morning and if you don't get the seed, just exit the day and try again on a different day until you do. That way you're not wasting the day and you're not wasting your seed from stump chances. Would you like even more wood? Now that you've got a good supply of hardwood going, go get yourself some wood chippers. Seriously, you've now got an even better and more efficient way of getting regular wood. Now with normal trees, one tree can give you up to 25 wood depending on your luck, but one mahogany tree can give you 10 or more hardwood, and just one piece of hardwood can give you 5 to 20 pieces of regular wood. So by chipping a hardwood tree, you can get 50 to 100 wood per tree which is as much wood as two to five regular trees. So totally worth it. <laughs> yes, even more hoarding. In my last tips video, I talked about saving your mixed seeds for the fall and getting your two crops in the first year. Now we have another great reason to save our mixed seeds and not just toss them or plant them right away. One of the special order board rewards for helping out Linus is the recipe for the fiber seeds, which if you are like me and love to make a ton of tree fertilizer and wild bait, you're gonna need a lot of fiber. So this crop is super helpful. It takes mixed seeds to craft, so stocking up can really help. Fiber seeds don't need watering and can grow during every season too. These are also really great placeholders for your tilled spots when the seasons change to keep the ground hoed and keep your fertilizer or retaining soil in the spot too. Definitely fill out those special orders. As for the special order board, it can be unlocked after the second day of your first fall, and I urge you not to sleep on these orders. Filling out some of these requests can give you some fantastic new craftables and access to fun new cutscenes. Not all of them are winners to me, but I personally prefer the rewards from Clint's Cave Patrol and the Wizard's Quest A Curious Substance. Some of the rewards are definitely worth it. Put a pan on it. After you finish the fish tank bundles, you will get the glittering boulder unlocked and access to panning. Something that a lot of people still don't know is that panning is one of the few ways that you can get iridium before having to step foot in Skull Cavern. And if you don't have the space for a pan in your pockets, just pop it on your head. This doubles as a hat so you always have it on you in times of need. Keep this one hush hush, don't tell Pierre. There is one thing in Stardew Valley that Jojamar is good for, and that is sunflower seeds. During the summer and fall, Pierre sells sea seeds for 200 gold each, but pop on over to Joja and you'll find that they're only 125 each. Now, I can't promise that these are organic, but the money saved makes selling a little bit of your soul worth it, right? Get a little trashy. <laughs> I love trash. I'm a bit of a trashy witch and I am not ashamed of my love of digging through the cans around town. But what I love about trash the most is, well, the recycling. Specifically, the soggy newspapers. If you fish these up or get them in your cow pots, I urge you to hold on to them until you get a recycling machine. Probably the best item that you can get from recycling trash can come from these, and that is the bolt of cloth. Why? Well, it sells for quite a bit, but it's also one of the items needed to complete the artisan bundle and unlocking tailoring in the game. If you get a bolt of cloth, it might just help you with the community center and get it done without having to own sheep or rabbits. Farming isn't just for the fields. You can farm mine levels. When you're spelunking in the mines, use the elevators to your advantage. If you are just needing a ton of a specific ore, you can head to an even floor, go down the stairs, gather the ore, and head back up and do it again. I use the elevators when I'm trying to take out a ton of any type of enemy, like dust sprites to get the burglar ring, or slimes to get the slime charmer ring. When it comes to searching for enemies to slay, you want to head to the floors that end with 5. When I'm dusty hunting, I head to 45, then 55, and 65, and repeat. Slimes are all over, but I find them most at 5, 15, and 25. This can be extremely useful when trying to find specific monsters requested on the community board and on the special orders board as well. Slay on, Slayer! 
If you're having a hard time finding a ladder for mining on a bad luck day, you actually have much better odds finding a ladder with taking out the enemies. Mad luck affects the chances of finding out a ladder from rocks, but has no effect on the ladders from slaying monsters. Get a little choosy with your geode cracking. Now geodes are a great source of minerals for the museum and ores for your smelting, but there are a couple of geodes that are just much more worth the 25 gold each to crack, especially at the beginning. Magma geodes and Omni geodes are the better option to keep bringing to Clint, as they both have a chance of giving you Iridium ore, which is one of the ways to get it in Preschool Cavern, especially if you're trying to find it for the Engineer Bundle or to make a bar for the Remix Die Bundle. So, if you're searching for early Iridium, consider just cracking these two until you get what you need and then moving on to the other ones for your artifacts and whatnot. Make yourself a homemade timer. A lot of people use this method, but I've had a lot of newer players tell me they didn't think about doing this, so I'll share this here. You can help yourself keep track of your processors that you keep in a barn or coop or storage shed by placing an extra keg, crystallarium, or preserved jar on the outside of the building that you started at the same time. This way, when you see that the outside item is done, you know it's time to check your progress on the inside. Light the way. Here is something that can be super helpful for an early game that not a lot of people do. It can sometimes take a while to get a hold of a glow ring, or maybe you just don't want to waste a ring spot on one when you have some better ones. So if you find yourself stumbling around in the dark a lot, I suggest strategically placing those extra torches you find or get from recycling. Sure, you can place them wherever, but it's kind of hard to look at. You can pop these behind bushes and trees to add a little bit of mood lighting on your way and still keep the place looking great. Make yourself just a little bit more room. On all of the various different farm layouts, there are some nice looking bushes and flora, which is great for decorative purposes, but sometimes you might want to have that space for a barn or a fruit tree. Well, some of these, not all of them, can actually be removed. Take a couple of swings to make just a bit more room. Learn to time your gifts. If you're in a gifting kind of mood, there are a few times and places that you will find a lot of villagers in one area at once. Probably one of the better gifting days I find is Friday. From 5 to 8 is a great time to hit up Pelican Town. A lot of folks are milling around headed home or headed to the saloon. Sunday and Tuesdays are also really great days to head to Pierre's. Tuesdays has a bunch of ladies working out and Sundays has a few villagers attending Yobo worship. Having that gift chest nearby makes this a whole lot easier too. I get what I want. <laughs> I touched on who are your better people to make friends with in the last tips video, as some of the villagers can gift you some pretty useful items. Now, what I didn't go over is something I found pretty useful when someone does send you something in the mail. I always try to get my friendship up with Emily, so she sent me wool in the mail, or Demetrius, a Nautilus, or even a Maki roll or catfish from Linus. But if you check your mail in the morning and see that they send you something that you just quite aren't looking for, just exit the game and start the day over. The gift you receive can be different if you just try again. And this tip, we are going to break it down. Now, real quick, this tip is a bigger late game tip and has some spoilers. So be sure to skip to this spot right here if you don't want to know what's going on with this one. Okay, when you are pretty late game, it can sometimes be hard to get a specific resource without buying tons from Robin or Clint. That's where the deconstructor comes in handy. I love this thing. You get it from the secret walnut room and it is amazing. I find the best uses are for when you need a ton of extra gold bars or stone. You can buy treasure hunter tackle from Willy for 750 gold, pop these in and get two gold bars. Much better than the cost of 10 gold ore and two gold from Clint. The spinner, which you can buy for 500 gold, gives you two iron bars as well, which you might need for kegs. And I never seem to have enough stone, so with my jade that I trade on Sundays for staircases, I take a few to turn into 99 stone apiece. Perfect for making a ton of crystallariums. You can also save your tackle that has been almost depleted and pop that in there too. 
And if you've used the ancient fruit seed method, I went over in my ancient fruit video and got a hold of a seed packet, but not the artifact yet. You can use the deconstructor for that too. Pretty cool and probably one of my favorite walnut room goodies. Well friends, that's it for this Stardew Valley tips and tricks video. Was there anything here that you didn't know? Be sure to let me know down in the comments which tip listed was your favorite. I sure do hope this video helped you out. Be sure to share with a friend that might need this info too. All right, I'm Wickedy. Thank you so much for hanging out in the valley with me and I will see you next time. Bye.